front, I've got to tell you something. My name is Fred Smoot. Um, that tells you something. That's why I'm here. I had to be a comedian with that name. I knew, as a little teeny guy, that there was probably going to be problems. Now, I had aspirations other than a, being a comedian. I thought perhaps I could be a, an astronomer, really get into that, or an Egyptologist, or perhaps a freelance gynecologist. Um, <laughs> But no, I had to be one of the crazies. When the Lord put me on the planet, that was it. And uh, I did a lot of sound effects when I was much younger. Uh, usually, well, the teachers would always strategically put me in the back of the classroom. I'd sit back there at my desk and I'd... Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and the kids would always condone that. The students, hey, smooch at it again. Go, Freddie. Go, <laughs> birdie dog, go, birdie dog. <laughs> Uh, the teachers would have a very low tolerance level of that kind of activity, as I recall. And I would be sent to the principal's office. And I remember her very well, Mrs. Heffelfinger. Now, she was equally as crackers as I was. I remember sitting in front of her, and she was, Oh, Freddie again. Freddie. I'm going to call your mother. I'm going to call your mother, Freddie. Hello, Mrs. Smooth. Guess who I have standing in front of me? And my dear mother. <laughs> Thank God. But one thing that really clicked with me, I mean, one thing that I really just got down and I really studied history, that really clicked. I became a straight C student. I got down into it. Just... Matter of fact, if you will, with me right now, Use your imaginations and come back with me as I'd like to recreate a great moment in history. Rather like John Ford envisioned it in one of his classic films, The Wild West. There we are going across the Great Plains and Mose, the head wagon master, cracks the whip, making the team move out for California land. Come on now, get cracking! Come on now! And sitting up there next to him is little honey wife. Completely dislocated. <laughs> and Lord Almighty, wouldn't you know it? Look up there in the canyon cliffs. 10,000 of the most ticked off Indians you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> These guys are really burned up. <laughs> and the great chief of all the tribes. Think. <laughs> what do you mean you don't understand what I'm saying? You better learn the language, man, or get out of this tribe. Or screw the heck in the town, 10,000 braves jump on their ponies. And meanwhile, the pioneers, holy road apples! <laughs> Indians! Quickly, have the wagons go into a parallelogram. Come on, bring it around there. <laughs> you know, the Indians are out there over in here. Will you stop pulling around, man? Mother, let me have the Winchester, quickly. <laughs> Sam, take the women and children and boop. <laughs> oh. Man, what a bad place to get it. Oh, I won't be making it to California with you, woman. Take care of the kids and make sure that... Oh, this has a rubber tip on it. Look. <laughs> and then... Who always arrives in the nick of time? 40,000 guys dressed in blue unis. God love them, the ROTC. <laughs> the 7th Cavalry! Bugler, sound the charge! <laughs> Come on! No way. Can't blow anything on horseback at 70 miles an hour. Just...
You can all know he was a war hero. Karate. The ability to smash things. Japanese martial arts. Incredible. Well, supposing one of my favorite people, Joe Big Shot, Mr. Macho, he's taking one free lesson of karate training from the back end of a Dell comic book. <laughs> and he thinks he possesses it. So here he is in the living room demonstrating karate. Okinawa! Karate. It begins here in the concentration. And it goes here. My hand will smash through this stool as though we're a cube of butter. <laughs> Concentration. <laughs> Authentic Japanese. Scares the hell out of the molecules, so when the hand is. thing, a very quick impression. My impression of a tube of toothpaste. This becomes a toothbrush. God created the universe. <laughs> and then he went on and created our solar system. Our great sun, the star. Then he went on and created the planets. The first planet in our solar system, the smallest planet, the planet Mercury. <laughs> well, he got better at it. The planet Venus, the mysterious atmosphere that shrouds its surface. <laughs> Then he created our planet, the planet Earth. <laughs> then the mysterious red planet, the planet Mars. And then the giant planet among planets that we know of. The incredible Jupiter.
Oh. And then Saturn with the incredible rings. And the twin planets, Uranus and Neptune. And then the last planet, the farthest distant planet, planet Pluto. <laughs> and then God created man. created woman. Thank God. I know you're going to join me. He's a very good friend of ours. We always have a grand time when Fred's down here. Let's have a nice round of applause for Mr. Fred Smoot, ladies and gentlemen. Come on out here, Fred. Get this Mandela, mind you, kids. Do you know Mandela? What is Mandela? Do you know man? What is it? It's in Brazil. What does it show you, Mandela? It's easy, lad. But in um, on the on the on the ship's crew, good man, they say later. What is it? What is it? Bye, bye. Good day, madam. Um, on a. Is the bad day? On the demand, good. Um, what day? Well, on this midget. You know, and I really love to do that stuff. I love to do that to unsuspecting strangers in elevators. Uh, there's nobody's prepared for shtick on elevators. You know, everybody's serious in elevators. God forbid, you know, and people are really crumbled and everything. And I stand there and the door is closed. And immediately I turn around and face these total strangers. Mondam, gotta get him in my bed. My lap, my dog. The very next floor, man. Got the elevator to myself, right up and down, you know. There's only other... Oh, well, yes, there are other ways of clearing elevators. Uh, and it just so happens, boys and girls, mom and dad. One of the greatest devices made. The Reagan administration is now using these. That's what you do. These are great on airplanes, buses... Elevators. Oh. 
Stand way in the back of the elevator. Everybody, you know, the adults are standing up front. Stand way in the back, you know. Works great, you know. Everybody immediately goes. <laughs> There's some little kid with his dad. Invariably, he goes, oh, "Dad, that guy just farted right over there." Of course, the ladies, you know, they never do that sort of thing. They don't. Ladies are ladies have dignity, and they, I don't. Where does it go, gals? I mean. Guys, just you know, who? <laughs> you know, gals are. Me. <laughs> God love you. <laughs> I love to do languages. Languages, uh, fake languages, are really e extraordinary because every once in a while you get maybe just a little teeny bit of a word in there someplace, you know, and people like. Tu m'as tu qui m'as je suis chez elle avec des marrons pas tu m'as vu je suis là tellement Oh Yeah yeah sure Then just uh, like the romantic languages like French is certainly one of the one oh, sexy Oh tu m'as Non je sais c'est mon tout le tu m'as Holding a child I guess <laughs> so her behind is en France je suis dans les tu les like the Japanese. Japanese is a formidable language. <laughs> a lot of hernia, isn't you? You know. <laughs> uh, the moon is out, and it is quite full, and it works its charm and its mystery. And I always, uh, I always get involved in the great classic horror movies. And we all love to go to a horror movie. Absolutely, especially when you have your girl, you know, because sometimes the gal really sits in front of that giant screen and sees something and, you know, it warms up to the guy. Ah! 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 And the guy is, you know, come on. It's a movie, come on. <laughs> <laughs> he's one side of it, you know, he's losing it. But uh, this, is, this is quite crazy. I do go on the other side for this one. I call this A Journey to the House of Horrors. And three favorites that you may remember from the old great classic films. Peter Laurie, Bella Lugosi, and Boris Karloff. All right, now, here we go. It takes place in an ancient abandoned castle, of course, high in the mountains of Transylvania. It's a wicked evil night. There's a storm. And we encounter Peter Lorre as the mad wicked evil scientist down in the dungeon of this old castle. And in front of him he has this huge cauldron that's boiling with this incredible potion that he's making. And he hopes one sip of it will change him into a superhuman being so that he may rule all of the castles. Ladies and gentlemen, come with me now to the House of Horrors. There's a storm.
Now at last, after all these years of experimentation. <laughs> I finally finished my fantastic potion. One little sip of this and then I'll be able to rule all of the castles. <laughs> <laughs> Quite good. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, surge through my body. Give me the strength of ten men. <laughs> well, Serge, <laughs> do something. <laughs> I don't understand it. There should have been some sort of reaction after all these years ago. Stupid stuff gives me gas. <laughs> I don't understand it. <gasps> it's Count Dracula. <laughs> if I can get him down here, I'll mess his head up with this stuff. <laughs> Woohoo! Bella! Bella, please, won't you fly down? I, I've got a special little drink here for you. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> you have a drink for me? <laughs> yes, 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 I do. I'm very excited. I made it specially for you. Please, won't you have a little sip of it? Care, care, care. You stuck raving out of your mind. You want to give me gas, too, don't you? I just want to be your friend. No, you don't. You despise me. That's right, I do. You and that asshole werewolf man. <laughs> I've heard it. Tonight I'm going to start by destroying you. <laughs> Got to catch me first? <laughs> no, you think back. Come on back down here. You can't escape. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, damn. You swine. Poop in my eye. God, must finish before it returns. <gasps> Look, coming down the corridor, Jack rotten, insidious monster Frankenstein. <laughs> Can't stand him. He's always pulling on my nose. He'll not soon discover me in this closet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my damn foot.
<laughs> Prepared for it. You're driving your automobile comfortably along highway and your lady's sitting there next to you and Lord Almighty, you look up into the rear view mirror and right there behind you, man, that glare of the red light, you know, and your heart goes, whoop, <laughs> you have a shock, you know, your heart goes, oh, your lady has some words of encouragement, oh, you're going to get a ticket, oh. No, you know. Come with me. Here we go. How you doing, baby? <laughs> Pretty good for Volkswagen, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sure enough, the CHP man, nine foot nine, two billion pounds. <laughs> How you doing? Look, I hate to be the one to bring this up, but uh, 100 mile an hour in a school zone, that's pretty risque, wouldn't you say? Well, let's see your driver's license registration right now. Good night, you guys. Be well and take care of yourselves, will you? A lot of laughter in your life. Thank you. Good night, everybody. <laughs>